It is Tuesday, October 3rd. And I don't know to tell you, it's madness out there. We've got huge pressure on bonds uh, with the Fed talking about uh, two more rate hikes. You got the Fed Governor Michelle Bowman calling for at least two more rate, rate hikes. We've got Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester wants one more rate hike. The vice chairman, Michael Barr, he's like, okay, we're, we're not quite there yet, more or less, but he's saying that, uh, carefully saying we could proceed to continue to have hikes. Um, but then you got uh, the Atlanta Fed president, he's like, well, we're not in any rush to ra raise rates again. Um, but they're leaving it very open for potential rate raise. So everybody's thinking they're done, but if they're not, that means inflation's still out of control, right? And one of the things that's out of control with this, they're saying all these other things are under control except for energy. Of course, energy is not in control. Look what happened, right? When some bitch steps into office, kills the, the Keystone Pipeline. And then, of course, all this this got to go electric shit that everybody's wanting to do and killing all plants and all the, 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 you know, the plants as far as the, the uh, ways to create power with all these alternative potential energies without getting it figured out first. <laughs> let's kill what we got. Then we'll figure it out. That's not working. It's driving the cost of everything through the freaking roof as far as our ability to to at least you know fuel our cars, put uh, put electricity into or into our walls, all that kind of stuff. You consider all that energy costs is going through the freaking roof all over the place, pushing inflation at hand. As a result of inflation, of course, with the the job numbers that are coming out, they're not they're they're flawed. They're not showing it correctly. I mean, look at this. They're showing different job postings in different places of the exact same job. And it looks look like there's more jobs available and there really isn't. Um, so when you've got, you know, of course, and, it, and they're changing the role title and all these things in different places for the exact same thing. Way too much data out there that's incorrect data that's making it look like things are a certain way when they're really not. Also with jobs reports, from what I've seen at this point, they've been cooking the piss out of them for, for months, if not well over the last couple of years to make it look like we're building things better, right? We ain't building shit better. It's actually just complete complete storm out there when it comes to way things are going economically. The way, just the fact that we're even keeping it all together to me is amazing. It really is. Now, I'm not dooming and glooming it, but it's like there, we're, there's a lot better decisions that could have been made, a lot better decisions, but they haven't been made. So we're having to just deal with what we've got. So what we've got is all that, what we're up against. So let's take a look at what, how it's affecting the charts. Completely affecting it negatively. Um, but it's it's where we're at. We have been very, very, very heavily out of the channel. It's extremely heavy out of our channel here. And we continue to work our way out of the channel because every time news comes in that should, you know, we try to get back in there, and then bam, get hit with some sort of news that pushes a negative. If we're, are we going to stay in that? I don't know. If we go back here, back in February, you see how long we hung out of that channel in February and finally came back, we may experience the exact same thing. Because look at how long it stayed in an oversold position in what we refer to as the stochastic charts. It tells you the, um, the, the direction as far as the trading is concerned until such time they start buying into it and they get to where they're putting too much money in. So right now we're in that oversold position. We're going to retain that oversold position for a while. It, could go as long as what it did here. So it left the channel back in, you know, 10th of February, did not work its way back in decisively till 15th of March. And that was a month and five days. We've been out of the channel since September 25th. So we're basically effectively seven, eight days outside the channel. It's possible we could stay there for a while. But what, when it does go back in, it meets the channel. In fact, let me go back into this. You know, sorry, I think I, I killed that share screen a little too early. Um, when it goes back into it, think about this. It's going to continue downward, right? Our channel is going to keep going downward. It's going to work its way back into it over here. Even getting back in, it will be at a fairly low point. So we are still looking at interest rates. They will be better than they are today, potentially. This is all potential, but I wouldn't say that they're going to be that much better. And what is interest rates looking like today? Well, if you're not one that goes and looks at bank rate, and you're just hopping around talking to different lenders, you should go here. Take a look at this. Now, if you're not sure how to use bank rate, just go to bankrate.com, scroll down to see the little girl on the slide right here. You want to click on mortgage. And you'll see what they're quoting the average person is getting for a 30-year fixed on the home they're going to live in. That's 7.8%. That's significant. So when you call me and you say, hey, why are you charging 7.8% with two or three points? That's why. 
the average homeowner right now is paying somewhere between 7.6 and 7.8%, possibly over 8%. You know, so this is an average, guys. This is not just your precise, your precise loan is going to be 7.8. Some might be a little bit better because of credit score. Some might be worse. So you could, I'm guessing anywhere from 7.5 to 8.2 might be what people are experiencing out there. So 7.8 being our, our median, if that is the case, and that's what we're seeing out there. We know that traditionally, and it's always been this way, if you're buying an investment property, it's one to one and a half percent higher in interest rate than your owner-occupied home. Well, if the owner-occupied is your 7.8 average, we don't have the one and a half percent, one to one and a half percent interest rates available to us. We're not seeing the 8.8, 8.9, or 9 percent available or nine and a half available to us right now. What they're going to do is give you the lower rate, maybe 7.8 or 7.9, or maybe eight and an eighth, and charge you some points. Why? Because you're basically getting what you would get if the rates went down later. So if they give you the highest rate right now, let's say it's 9%. And let's say the rates go down to 7.8% in the next two, three years. Then you refinance that 7.8%. What happened? The people who gave you the money got paid off before they conducted enough interest for it to make sense to do the deal. Therefore, they lost money on you. Best way to do this, give you the lower rate that you would jump on if it was refi time down the road, right? Give it to you now and then charge you the points. Two things work, right? They keep you in the deal. They make their interest for a longer period of time. So it makes sense to keep doing business and, and giving us money to fund your, fund your enterprise. But you also basically buy the refi you would get later for only two, three points rather than the entire cost of the refi, which would be about five to six points. You're saving yourself money and getting the rate that you'd be going for later. So look at this as a benefit for all. Not saying it's awesome. Not saying you should love it. I'm just saying it is what it is and it could be a hell of a lot worse. So Appreciate you guys. I'll get your information on uh, Friday. Talk about, a little bit more about what's going on with those hedge funds. They're taking your future from you if you don't get in the investment buying business now. Thank you.